Good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Stuff and Such. Today we're going to go over the Chinese camera that they're often advertised online. These things right here. And go over and see if they're crap, if they're great, or if they're somewhere in the middle. Some of you folks may have also been searching forums and going through uh, the internet, searching various sources about uh, trying to get an opinion, like I was. Perhaps you couldn't quite find anything that give you a real good idea, so that's why I'm going to make this video. I got one a couple weeks ago, and I've been kind of doing a bit of him and hawing over it. Before we get too far in this video, I need you to subscribe to the channel. It's greatly appreciated, and it's necessary to uh, get this channel audience built up. So without any more delay, let's get into it. I'd like to make it kind of clear to everyone that this model is not the yo-yo um, marketed camera so I don't want to slander them but I also want to make note that from what I can tell they're very very similar I can't you can't tell them apart from the listings and stuff so I don't know what would change looking at the camera bodies through the internet they look the same like they just look identical but all the great reviews I've heard are for the EOYO, so perhaps they're better, perhaps they're not. So I got this camera for $125. It was on sale, down from $200 price up. The screen that it came with was the 10.1 inch screen, um, so it was one of the bigger ones. And that's that's the only reason I actually pulled the trigger on buying it. I wasn't really planning on buying an entire kit. I didn't want it. I'd wanted just the camera to try it in my underwater camera build that you can find in maybe a video. I'll try and link it somewhere up here. And you'll probably likely see it at the end of the video. So they claim it's the 1000 TVL underwater camera. It has the 15 bright white lights that you can manually turn up and uh, has some infrared lights. So anyways, let's get into it. Of that. Of that junk paper. So this here is the screen. I've pulled it out. Ten and a half. This one claims to be seven. Over here. So you can see it's definitely bigger. And then this one claims to be a nine. So it's a little shorter, more widescreen, but pretty close really. So they're really quite close. Alright, so it's plugged in. See the screen's kind of flickering, we'll flick on the camera. So it is reasonably um, higher def, uh, gives a pretty decent, pretty decent uh, resolution here. You'll notice it's very blue, you'll notice it's kind of flickering and flashing. And that's kind of where this this whole thing really is a weak point is actually the screen. The screen is an LED screen, so it can't take cold very much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and pop this screen out, throw it in the freezer for a couple minutes here while we're shooting the rest of this video. Pull it out and I'll try and show you just how bad it gets. I took it out ice fishing once in a warm ice hut and it was uh, it was flashing and, and making the horizontal alert lines were kind of mooning, crescenting, cres whatever the heck it's called. They weren't even running straight across, they were starting to bow and it was just kind of a real nightmare. Couldn't even look at it. And it wasn't very cold, I had in the heated ice shack, it was about plus three Celsius. I was sitting there in my, my shirt, it wasn't cold at all. So I'm going to take this camera out, or take the screen out, and then we'll go over a few little weak spots to look out for, and then we'll grab the screen back and uh, show you what I mean. Okay, so the next thing that I kind of don't really like is it comes with this 30 meter wire and you can see it's like that's about 100 feet of wire in the palm of my hand. So it gives you an idea just how thin this line is. I measured it with a micrometer in a previous video and it's only 75 thou thick. So what that means is that there's very thin insulators on all the wires both the power and the video signal 
because that's what it needs. It needs the two to run through it. So to have an insulator around all of them, have insulator around the video and an insulator around the uh, positive and negative power, it's very, very thin. So what I'm saying is that if ever you are fishing with this thing and and uh, a fish gets caught in a, a small fish, it's, your line's just going to zip through that and it's cut into it and it's going to be destroyed. And you're going to be out of camera. Another annoying thing is I don't know how you're supposed to hang this thing. I don't know if that's what these things are for. But it's really annoying. It wouldn't have taken very much more um, insight to actually design something that was more user friendly. So that's kind of silly. I don't, I don't like the blueness of this of the uh, the picture. I guess the reason why I'm harping so hard on this this camera is just because of how fa falsely advertised it is. It's advertised as having an extremely clear, beautiful picture. Like they have these really fake pictures on there that you and I both know aren't real. But to have such a massive gap that there needs to be some responsibility or uh, yeah responsibility I think that's the word you need to be responsible for what you what you sell and advertise so this here another screen I got that's the picture quality of it it's a little as you can see it was a little more stable it wasn't bouncing around a whole pile I got this other seven inch screen that's That's a little seven. So that poster uh, uh, banner behind me, that's about eight feet behind me. So you can kind of get an idea just how wide of an angle it has. I'm gonna go grab the other original camera that came with it just so you can get an idea of what, I was, what I'm trying to talk about. And then I'll do a broad summarizing um, statement. So there's the screen. It's not too bad. I don't know if it's not quite cold enough. Or if there might be another issue that's going on here that I don't haven't figured out. As you see it's kind of flashing and stuff, but it's actually not as bad as it was on the lake. I'm kind of wondering if the camera getting cold was the reason why it was so acting so poorly. Because something something was definitely happening that made it so unbearable that I turned it off when I was out fishing. And I'd really like to replicate what was going on. So it could just be a faulty camera. So I'm going to throw those in the freezer also. The big question of this review is, is this camera worth the money? Is it worth it to you? Is it worth it at all? And for me, the answer is a hard no. Um, not because of any one major thing, but rather multiple of the little things. So knowing that the camera cord is extremely puny, so there's no a little nick or just anything that's going to be destroyed and then you're out of action. And to buy a replacement one of those is about 60 to 80 dollars US. They got them marked up pretty hard. So that's that kind of sucks. The battery component side of things, it is kind of a neat, tightly wound little package. You have your video, your video in, and your power goes in there, and then you have one for your LED light. So that's actually another wire that runs down that incy bincy cord is you have an adjuster here to turn on your LED lights down there, which I've heard scares away fish, so whether that's true or not, I don't know. But anyways, the point is there's another wire in there also that you can control here. And then over here you have your video and power to your screens. 
So that's all fine and dandy. Um, once it croaks, you're done. So that's why I'm actually building mine with one of these. It's just an adapter that goes on your Milwaukee battery. It has 12 volt, 5 mil out. It has USB there, which I run through a DC little 5 volt to 12 volt converter that runs my screen. So, so that component, the battery that comes with it, isn't anything special for me. The screen, the screen would have been nice if it was LCD. I believe the LCD handles cold a bit better. I'm kind of, I was kind of surprised when I pulled it out of the freezer. It wasn't in there very long, maybe five minutes. But it, it feels cold to the touch, cool to the touch rather. That it wasn't acting up more. So there's something funny going on and I I know that something I'll I shot another partial video of a review I'll put some footage of that in here the problem was I had chicks that were being retarded loud I'm having a hard time kind of summarizing whether or not to tell someone to try it out or not it does work and while it's not the thousand TVL that they claim it is it's still not too bad except for the blue factor that blue hue it just drives me bonkers if i knew what was going on that was causing the issue of the uh, the swooping lines across the screen that'd make a bit of a factor of whether i could recommend it but honestly the uh, the thing that the thing that scares me the most is actually the wire to the camera. If it wasn't so puny, I'd have more faith in it. And because it's such a, a expensive part of the camera, of the of the unit to purchase, it makes me really quite nervous. So, like you wouldn't want to go f fishing trout or even pike or anything in any length, any depth of water. Because, or even a whitefish or anything, actually, because you get a piece of mono wrapped around that, and it goes for a little quick run wrapped around it. Would I think it would just zip that camera right off, and then you're done, and you'd have to go buy another camera, which is just as crappy in in terms of wire. The, the resolution I could probably live with. So if I had to rate this out of 10, I guess that's maybe the easiest way to do it, I'd, I'd give it a 5. Because nothing's really... Nothing really blows me away. But it also... It works. So you're kind of you're kind of on the fence sort of thing. I guess, I guess the thing that bugs me the most about this thing... Is because... The cost between doing something good and great, there's only three components, four components. There's the camera, there's the wire, there's the battery, and the screen. It's, I don't know how you can really justify saving 10, 15%, and then you'd make yourself such a, you'd get such a good reputation. It, it just, I don't understand it. You're so close, but you're so, I'm too cheap. Too cheap, not gonna, not gonna do it. I don't know. I'm gonna go pull that camera out and stick it in here and see what it does. So there's a definite little quiver to it, but it's not nearly as bad as in the water. Which makes a person believe that there might be something going on with this wire where the water's actually causing a bit of a uh, interference or something so I'll, I'll include a bit of footage that I shot the other day and you can see how bad the screen or camera or something was back then I I can't get it to replicate what it's why it was doing it as I hope you enjoy this video guys I if you help you make a decision um, help me out and subscribe to my channel really appreciate that also if you have your own experiences with these things and are different than mine whether it's the color isn't 
as ugly blue or the screen isn't flickering and flashing or if you know why yours was flickering and flashing and you fixed it or so on and so forth um, let me know I'd like to I'd like to kind of riddle that out kind of bugs me but I also don't care because I'm building my own anyways thanks for watching guys hopefully you enjoyed this we'll catch you in the next video if there's anything else you would like to see about this thing before I send it back or return it or get rid of it shoot me a message or shoot a comment down below and if you have any help helpful tips on this thing in general let me know I look forward to hearing from you guys thanks for watching take care bye now